It's been a couple of days since the Chinese astronauts got stuck in space. How are they doing now? Does China's space agency have any plans to bring them back? Or maybe SpaceX could step in to help with a rescue mission. First, for anyone who's not familiar, here's a quick recap. After the Shenzhou-21 crew arrived at China's Tiangong space station on November 1st, the Shenzhou-20 trio, Commander Chen Dong, Operator Chen Zhongrei, and Science Operator Wang Jie, helped the newcomers adjust to life in microgravity. On November 4th, they officially handed over management of the station to the new team. With that, it was expected that the Shenzhou-20 mission would wrap up the next day, on November 5th. However, on the morning of the planned return, the China Manned Space Agency, CMSA, announced that the crew's journey home would be postponed. Their statement read, The Shenzhou-20 manned spacecraft is suspected of being struck by a small piece of space debris, and impact analysis and risk assessment are underway. To ensure the safety of the Taikonauts and the successful completion of the mission, it has been decided that the return mission of Shenzhou-20, originally scheduled for November 5th, will be postponed. Since then, Chen, Chen, and Wang have remained aboard Tiangong with a lighter schedule, fewer experiments and maintenance tasks, compared to the months since their April launch. With both crews on board, the station's life support systems are fully capable of sustaining six people for several weeks, backed by ample supplies from the Tianzhou 9 cargo craft and the recent Shenzhou 21 mission. After six days of waiting, we finally got an update. On November 11th, the CMSA released a statement on the crew's status. Following the postponement of the Shenzhou-20 manned spacecraft return mission, the project team, adhering to the principles of life first, safety first, immediately activated emergency plans and measures. They organized comprehensive simulation analysis, testing, and safety assessments of the Shenzhou-20 spacecraft, studied the return implementation plan for the Shenzhou-20 astronaut crew, and ensured that all systems strictly followed procedures for testing and joint debugging. Critical product status evaluations and quality confirmations were organized. The landing site is currently conducting comprehensive return drills for the Shenzhou-20 crew. All tasks are progressing steadily and orderly, according to schedule. The agency also noted that the Tiangong complex remains fully operational and capable of supporting both crews in orbit. The Shenzhou-20 astronauts are reportedly healthy and continuing to live and work normally carrying out joint scientific experiments alongside the Shenzhou-21 crew. It's truly great to see that the Taikonauts are still doing just fine up there. But a thing that bugs me is that the statement still does not elaborate on what specific issue the Shenzhou-20 encountered or where the problem lies. From what's known about debris protection design, the areas of the station that face forward along its orbital path are at a moderately high risk of impact. That means the service module of Shenzhou-21, which contains the main propulsion system, is most exposed, while Shenzhou-20 would have all three of its modules vulnerable to debris. So if Shenzhou-20 really was struck, possible damage could range from a leak in the orbital module to scarring or erosion of the re-entry capsule's ablative surface, or even damage to one of the service module's systems. Reading between the lines, it sounds like the Shinjo-20 crew will be heading back to Earth soon, still aboard their own spacecraft. Investigations and safety assessments of Shinjo-20 have been ongoing since November 5th, though no official conclusions have been shared yet. The China Manned Space Agency also mentioned that both the Shenzhou-20 and Shenzhou-21 crews are working together smoothly, with Tiangong's systems fully supporting all six Taikonauts. Supplies remain plentiful thanks to recent deliveries from Tianzhou-9 and Shenzhou-21. As for when Shenzhou-20 will actually return to Earth, that's still unknown. There are currently no launch notices from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center following CAS Space's Kinetica-1 and Galactic Energy's Series-1 launches earlier in the week, meaning activity there is quiet. Similarly, no official recovery notice for Shinjo-20 has been issued, though rehearsals for the landing are reportedly ongoing. Of course, it didn't take long for Western space fans to start calling for a SpaceX rescue mission. It wouldn't be the first time the idea has come up. Earlier this year, former U.S. President Donald Trump famously told Elon Musk to go get the crew of Boeing's Starliner spacecraft, who he claimed had been virtually abandoned by the Biden administration. Musk leaned into it, and, amusingly enough, that whole situation ended with astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams returning home aboard a SpaceX Crew Dragon in March 2025. 
Something similar happened in 2022 when a Soyuz spacecraft at the ISS was struck by a micrometeorite. Russia launched an uncrewed replacement vehicle to bring the crew home, but NASA briefly considered using a SpaceX capsule if needed. So, technically, could SpaceX swoop in and rescue the Taikonauts too? Well, not quite. The next Crew Dragon launch isn't until around March or April 2026, NASA's Crew-12 mission to the ISS, followed by another in June 2026 for VAST's private space station. One of those would have to be delayed or repurposed to free up a spacecraft. SpaceX doesn't exactly have rescue dragons waiting on the launch pad. Then there's the docking problem. Despite rumors that China copied the docking system used by SpaceX and the ISS, the truth is more nuanced. While international docking standards are public, China's actual hardware implementation likely isn't compatible with Crew Dragon. What about a spacewalk transfer? In 2024, SpaceX successfully demonstrated EVA capability when Jared Isaacman exited through Crew Dragon's nose hatch. But the Chinese crew's launch suits aren't spacewalk rated, and although Tiangong does have Fei Tian EVA suits, they're not designed to interface with SpaceX systems and probably wouldn't even fit through Crew Dragon's hatch anyway. If Shenzhou-20 is unable to fly again, it's more likely that Shenzhou-22 will be launched as a replacement. In that scenario, the backup plan would unfold in a carefully coordinated sequence. First, the Shenzhou-22 spacecraft and its Long March 2F launch vehicle would be prepared and rolled out to the launch site. Meanwhile, the uncrewed Shenzhou-20 would undock from Tiangong and move away from the station's vicinity. Once cleared, Shenzhou-22 would launch uncrewed and dock to Tiangong at the Earth-facing port of the Tianhe core module. The Shenzhou-21 crew would then transfer their personal equipment and mission materials into Shenzhou-22, while the Shenzhou-20 crew would move their remaining items into Shenzhou-21. After the handover, the Shenzhou-20 crew would depart Tiangong aboard Shenzhou-21, returning safely to Earth while the Shenzhou-21 crew would remain in orbit with the newly docked Shenzhou-22. A fresh backup spacecraft and launch vehicle would then be readied as quickly as possible to restore emergency coverage for the mission. This contingency plan has existed since the Shenzhou-12 mission, though it's never been put into practice. A backup Long March 2F-G rocket and Shenzhou spacecraft are always kept on standby at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center throughout each crewed mission typically arriving about two months before their backup period begins. If the primary mission concludes successfully, the backup hardware is reassigned to the next flight. In theory, the backup system can be readied for launch in just over eight days and reach Tiangong within three to seven hours after liftoff. Still, given the China Manned Space Agency's latest statements, it seems unlikely that such an operation will be needed this time. The incident, coming less than a year after SpaceX's rescue of the Boeing crew, really highlights two growing issues in spaceflight. We need standardized systems that allow for cross-agency or even cross-nation rescues, and we can't keep ignoring the problem of space debris. As we've seen, both of these incidents happened during missions to a space station, where the crew could use the station as a safe haven until a rescue plan was figured out. But on the commercial side, there are a lot of free flyer missions that don't have that option. Those crews rely on limited onboard supplies, so if something goes wrong, help has to come fast. That's why there's growing talk about setting up an initial space rescue capability, something flexible enough to use existing spacecraft, like SpaceX's Dragon or any compatible vehicle, to respond quickly in emergencies. Another takeaway from this incident is pretty simple. We've got to do something about space junk. Space is getting messy, really messy. We've been launching satellites since the late 1950s, starting with Sputnik in 1957. Fast forward to today, and there are tens of thousands of satellites orbiting Earth. With all that activity, we've created a growing cloud of debris that's cluttering up our skies and even contributing to light pollution. Think of it like this. Imagine if you tossed a full trash bag out your front door every day instead of taking it to the bin. Eventually, that pile would get so big you couldn't even leave your house. That's more or less what's happening in orbit. The more junk we leave up there, the harder it becomes to safely launch and operate new missions. As of April 2025, the European Space Agency reported that over 40,000 artificial objects are currently being tracked in orbit. And that's just the stuff big enough to monitor. Even tiny fragments, pieces just a few millimeters across, can damage spacecraft or throw them off course. This all ties into a scenario known as the Kessler Syndrome. 
The idea that as low Earth orbit gets more crowded, one collision could trigger a domino effect of more collisions. Each crash creates even more debris, which in turn raises the risk of further crashes. In the worst case, some orbital zones could become so full of junk that launching or operating satellites there would be impossible for decades. So, how do we clean this up? One idea comes from SpaceX. Back in 2021, Elon Musk suggested using the Starship vehicle to scoop up large chunks of space debris. He even joked on X, we can fly Starship around space and chomp up debris with the moving fairing door. Here's how that could work. According to the Starship user guide, the spacecraft's payload fairing, basically the big shell that holds cargo, can open and close like a clamshell. Normally, it's used to release satellites into orbit, but in a debris collection mode, Starship could open that fairing, glide through debris fields, and use its momentum to scoop up junk, trapping it inside before sealing back up for the return trip. It's kind of like how humpback or blue whales feed. They cruise through swarms of krill with their mouths open, then snap them shut once they've caught enough. With an internal volume of about 1,100 cubic meters, Starship's fairing could hold a lot of debris, enough to fit objects up to eight times the size of a Crew Dragon capsule, trunk included. The idea of a Pac-Man-style starship scooping up space debris is definitely cool, but it's still pretty rough and challenging to make practical. It might work well for larger pieces of junk, like dead satellites or leftover rocket parts, but when it comes to smaller debris, it may not be worth the cost of an entire starship mission. Plus, smaller pieces are much harder to track, so even if starship wanted to go after them, finding and targeting those tiny bits would be a major challenge. So, what do you think about this method? Let me know in the comments. If SpaceX started cleaning up orbit tomorrow, they'd probably be picking up stuff launched by other companies, or even entire countries. Honestly, it's hard to imagine that Russia or China would be cool with Elon Musk grabbing their old satellites or rocket parts and hauling them back to Earth.